Vice President Sayleri announces candidacy for Kulmia party leadership. Journalist Musa Oldon is healthy, says the Health Ministry. And in Somalia, COVID-19 cases rise to 528 as 48 more people test positive for COVID-19. Those are some of our top stories lined up for you here at CBN News at 5. My name is Yunus Deko. Somaliland's Ministry of Health has confirmed that journalist Abdimalik Musa Oldon has not been infected with coronavirus, as earlier reported. The Ministry of Health of the Republic of Somaliland has refuted claims that imprisoned journalist Abdi Malik Musa Oldon has contracted COVID-19 at a prison facility in the capital Hagesa. The ministry's clarification comes a day after Wadani Party expressed deep concerns over the health condition of detained journalist Musa Oldon. The family of the journalist who is in jail for a year now has said he is sick and has the symptoms of COVID-19. However, the Director General of the Ministry of Health, Mohamed Hergie, denounced allegations leveled against the government, which has been accused of sidelining the health of journalist Abdimalik Musa Oldon. Dr. Hargie said they have tested Abdimalik's COVID-19 test and the results showed negative. The government has also promised to conduct further tests to validate the results of the first examination. The family of the imprisoned journalist Abdi Malik Musa Oldon had announced that he is suffering from a bad cough and difficulties with breathing. The international human rights advocate Amnesty International had previously pointed out the coronavirus risk to which Abdi Malik Musa Oldon is exposed to in prison. In a press statement on the first anniversary of his detention, Amnesty International called on Somaliland's government to release Oldon, considering the high risk of coronavirus infection in prison. Amnesty International called Somaliland's government to immediately and without condition release the journalist. Amnesty International said Oldon should have been included in the 574 inmates who were pardoned by President Bihi to contain the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Abdi Malik, who is a fierce critic of President Musa Bihi's administration, was detained on April 17 last year. He was charged with anti-state propaganda and defamation of a private school in Marudije region. He was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Reporting for CBA TV, I am Wango Ingoge. <laughs> Somaliland's Vice President Abdurrahman Abdullahi Ismail Seyli has announced his bid to run for the candidacy of the ruling party Kulmiye. Somaliland's Vice President Abdurrahman Abdullahi Ismail Seyli has announced his bid to run for the presidential candidacy for the ruling party Kulmiye. The Vice President made the remarks in an interview in Hargeisa with a local broadcaster. Seyli said, I will run for the leadership of the party once the party holds its general assembly. Vice President Saili has argued that he is the only one who is entitled to vie for the party's leadership at this time around, and the reason is that he is one of the founders of the Kulmiya party. Yes, I have the intention is. I don't think there is anyone else who deserves the seat more than I do. I am a founding member of the party. He also said that he announced his political ambitions at the right time. Sayli'i had served as Vice President under former President Ahmed Mohamed Silanyo. He has served as Vice President of Somaliland for a consecutive 10 years. Somaliland last held a presidential election in 2017, and incumbent President Musi B. Abdi won the tightly contested elections. <laughs> Current President Musi B. Abdi is 72 years old, and it's not clear whether he will run for a second term in office. Mohamed Kahin, Somaliland's current minister for internal affairs, is among those likely to vie for the party's candidature if President Musa B. Abdi will not run for office in 2022. Six weeks after registering its first coronavirus case, Somalia on Wednesday had confirmed more than 528 infections of the highly infectious respiratory disease that has disrupted life worldwide. We're going to give you the details. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Somalia's total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases rose to 528 on Tuesday as 48 more tested positive. 
Fauzia Abikar, Somalia's health minister, announced that five patients recovered and were discharged, raising Somalia's total number of recoveries to 19. The number of deaths remained 28 as reported in mid-April. We had the dick ah to dobe ye toban. Hala the so corde goba a kelejugan. We hawaii benadir or a fartan yuko jubalan or a sedeh ye southwest or a affer. According to the ministry, that one of the cases are male while 17 are female. The minister said 41 of the new patients were in Banadir and 4 in Southwest State. The remaining cases were recorded in Jubaland State. Doctors, community leaders, public health experts and staffers with humanitarian agencies have expressed worries that swaths of the population, especially in the capital Mogadishu, might have been impacted by COVID-19. The death toll from the disease is however the highest in the region with 28 people so far succumbing to the disease. In Somalia, the challenge to contain COVID-19 is staggering. The country's health infrastructure has been gutted by decades of conflict and instability. A large part of the population lives in close quarters, while millions reside in decrepit settlements for internally displaced people without money to buy soap or access to regular running water. At the same time, staying at home is not a practical option for most informal workers who need to leave their homes daily to earn money and put food on the table. Reporting for CBA TV, I am Wango Ingoge. And Somalia's international partners have welcomed the dialogue between the Jubilant administration and the opposition, which culminated in a reconciliation agreement in April 23rd. Somalia's international partners have welcomed the dialogue between the Jubilant administration and the leadership of the Jubilant Council for Change, which culminated in a reconciliation agreement signed on April 23rd. The agreement, they said, represents a helpful step towards resolving the disputes that emerged from the Jubilant electoral process in August 2019, which left their communities and political stakeholders divided. Disputed electoral outcomes in Jubaland and other federal member states over the past 18 months underscore the importance of credible electoral process in which Somalia may choose their leaders in accordance with the provisions of the federal constitution and the federal member state constitutions. In a press statement released earlier today, the partners encouraged all Jubaland stakeholders, including political leaders, communities and traditional leaders, to build upon the 23rd April Agreement implement the follow-up steps and continue with their constructive dialogue. They have also welcomed the willingness expressed by the Jubaland stakeholders to engage the federal government of Somalia and that Jubaland is ready for full collaboration with the federal government. Somalia's international partners have urged the Jubaland administration and the federal government of Somalia's leadership to peacefully resolve their continuing differences through dialogue and to de-escalate the ongoing tensions in Gedo region. In the press statement, the partners said they stand ready to provide the necessary support to the federal government of Somalia and all federal member state leaders as they strive for reconciliation and cooperation to advance national interest. In this regard, they said the partners also welcome other recent reconciliation initiatives, in particular in southwest state and Galmudug, aimed at forming inclusive unified state-level administrations. The international partners urged that these efforts continue through Somalia for the benefit of the people. Meanwhile, they have called upon Somalis to foster unity and reconciliation as they begin the holy month of Ramadan while facing not only the unprecedented menace from COVID-19, but also the continuing threat from terrorism. Kenya's economic growth has slowed in 2019, missing government estimates as delayed rains hit agriculture. This was made public by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Kenya's economy expanded at a slower pace of 5.4% last year, down from 6.3% in 2018, according to the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Ukuri Atani. The pace of economic activity was hurt by slowdown in agriculture, building and construction, as well as manufacturing. Mr. Yatani said this as he released Kenya's Economic Survey 2020 in Nairobi. 
Agriculture, which makes up a third of gross domestic product, was hit by late rains and growth in the sector slowed to 3.6% in 2019 from 6% the previous year. While rains have been good so far this year, agricultural exports such as flowers will probably take a big hit due to the coronavirus pandemic. Building and construction contracted to 6.4% compared to a growth of 6.9% in 2018, largely on reduced activity on the standard gauge railway project. Similarly, the manufacturing sector, which is expected to churn out most of the high-quality Somaliland will this year celebrate 29 years since it declared its independence from the former Somali Republic. The country has reached a milestone in almost every sector, whether it's academia, agriculture, democratic elections, and even sports. However, there is one big dilemma. The country has abandoned its founding history during the Second Liberation. The location where Somaliland declared its independence is in a very sorry state. I recently visited Buru'o and filed the following story. Somaliland's capital, Hargeisa, is a modern city, home to everything you will find in the west as well as the east of our universe. From five-star hotels, amazing road networks, lovely people, traditional way of life among other combinations of modern ways of life. It has been the face of Somaliland since it declared its independence from the former Somali Republic, which was formed after the unity of British Somaliland and Italian Somaliland in 1960. But the true history of modern-day Somaliland lies 290 kilometers from the capital in Buru'o. Here is where Somaliland declared its independence from the Unity Pact of the former Somali Republic in 1991. All that remains at the venue where the country regained its independence the second time, however, is ruined houses, human feces, bushes, and hallmarks of failure. <laughs> Could this be the reason why Somaliland, even after two decades, it has not been recognized by any country around the world? How did we end up here? Uh, this was the place where the declaration took place in 1991. It's a great place, historic place, all people know. Um, why is it ruined? Why it didn't be married, you know, and built? Uh, and why didn't it be made, you know, a heritage place and, uh, for the Somaliland people to uh, come and see where they came from? Uh, it's a question. It's a birsa, uh, always. But I think what the Somaliland leaders and politicians uh, focus was the was the essential life of the of, of, of the people. Because they didn't, uh, they didn't have the enough community, the enough uh, economy facilities, and they were struggling with building the, the basic lives of the, of the people around, whether they are nomadic or whether they are cities. I think not only me, every Somali other in this country, whether they are in, 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 from the diaspora or whether they are from the local, uh, they feel sad in, in many ways. They feel sad in the first place that um, um, people in the world let them down. That's the first um, disappointment that they get. Uh, they also feel sad when they come to know that their economy is not sufficient for them to develop, to build their economy uh, in order to and show their growth of economy. That was another thing because everything was just locked down from from all the uh, outside parties, basically. Uh, so when you when we talk about the economy issues in Somaliland, people depend on their you know local trade and you know local businesses and all that. Uh, they don't get anything at all from any other way. Many leaders from what then was Northern Somalia, present-day Republic of Somaliland, were not satisfied with the leadership of dictator Siad Barre 
and believed the South was not equally sharing the resources with the North. A guerrilla war led by the Somali National Movement comprising of key leaders from the North ensued and led to the overthrow of the government of dictator Siad Barre in 1991. The Declaration of Somaliland's Independence was made here, at this building and under this acacia tree. Abdurrahman Turu's images have today been decorated within the central business district of Buru, led others in the declaration. He later became the country's first president. This historical monument, a heritage to be preserved, has been deserted, left without a sense of humiliation. Somalilanders just ignored it. <laughs> Is this how we celebrate our milestone? Is this what Somaliland's founding fathers want to be remembered for? Is this how we thank all the martyrs who died during the Gorilla War? Is this what their orphan children will be proud of today? It's a matter of advice to the government and those who are responsible uh, to uh, take this case seriously and to invest and to do for the people something that related to their own uh, existence and their own life and their own uh, identity. Uh, I would advise the government and anyone who's related or anyone who has that responsibility, uh, whatever their share, their share might be, uh, to take the full responsibility of, uh, you know, taking, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, a positive step to you know, uh, build that place, uh, infest it, and make it as a as a base for the heritage of the people. So the people will be uh, not only today, but in the years and ages and centuries to come. Uh, people will come back when they when they need to know about their you know history and their second independence. Uh, so the people, the, the, the government should should focus that uh, signatures of those who passed away, who done the declaration, would be you know uh, useful and sufficient to be shown. Uh, if and if if it is applicable, uh, photos and pictures and those who are uh, involved. Uh, I think it would be found in the uh, uh, in the files of, uh, of the archives, actually. So I think it's a matter of responsibility, but I can only advise. Within the capital, Hargeisa, there are numerous monuments showing what the military junta of Siad Barre did to the people of Somaliland. The fighter jets they used to bombard innocent civilians and the armored vehicles they used to instill fear to the population. Yes. This will remind everyone about what the government of the day did. It was the war that ravaged the region in the 1980s. This site is the most important historical legacy left for us by our founding fathers. They converged here in their hundreds, agreed to form a government, resolved their dispute, and went ahead to have numerous presidential elections over the years. Somaliland has reached a great milestone. It has shown the world what it is capable and carrying out functions of a modern state, yet no country in the world has recognized it. When you seek recognition for a state or uh, to be or to seek to be known as a, as a country or as a government or as a state, uh, where you get the recognition is from the United uh, Nations. Uh, where all the nations are united and uh, rules and regulations takes place and rights takes place, obligations takes place. However, uh, this time of the age, uh, everything depends on uh, interests. So uh, the, the big countries who are holding the United Nations in their hand didn't see anything to do with their own interests when it comes to uh, would you recognize Somaliland or not? Could it be because we abandoned our heritage while seeking international recognition? Worldwide, countries preserve their heritage. Kenya, for example, has preserved the list of what you could imagine will be historical in half a century. Kenya's first president and founding father, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, 
was arrested and detained while agitating for Kenyans' right during the fight for independence. The house where he was detained in is now a heritage center and preserved by the National Museums of Kenya. It is the same all over the world, from South Africa's Nelson Mandela, whose statue was erected at the Union buildings to Egypt's Gamal Abdel Nasser House, which has recently been turned into a museum. Their legacy and history is preserved and documented. If there is intention from both the government and patriots of Somaliland, these ruined houses and their abandoned national patrimony can be turned to sites and monuments of national and international importance where priceless collections of Somaliland's living cultural and natural heritage can be deposited. It's a hope and prayer that something will be done about that heritage before it's entirely lost. On behalf of all those who made this broadcasting possible, thank you for joining us. My name is Eunice Deco. Have a lovely time and enjoy the rest of your viewing. Adeg gabaysi wuxu ku sahlaya adigoo jooga gurigaaga iyo goobtaada shaqo inaad si fudud oo degdeg ah ugu